is Michael out in Maui. Um, so today we've been discussing how to throw forehand. On the first video, we are discussing um, the snap of the wrist, um, the grip, and how the fingers will push the disc with the wrist and that's your snap to release the disc so it's real important to develop you know the wrist and the the finger push you know to get the maximum power you know when you're when you're snapping your wrist to throw the forehand so I recommend you know practice that a lot you know just like we were talking about just kind of stand and throw just like this and just get used to pushing with the finger and your wrist. Um, the wrist angle is, is kind of up to you. It's preference again. Um, some people really put a big kick on it. You know, when they come back here, you know, they want a, you know, a real big bend on their wrist. Um, so I think it just falls under comfort. You know, whatever feels good for you to where you want your wrist. Um, but it's the same thing we were talking about is you got to lock your wrist in that position. So if you're going to throw a forehand shot and you want just a little bit of a kick, you got to put enough pressure there to, to keep it. You know, so when you're back here with your reach back, you know, you come back here, you know, you want your wrist angle to stay. So you want to put enough pressure, you know, to hold your wrist on the angle that you choose. You know, if you want it really hard kicked, if you want it a little bit, but you can't go back and just be so loose with your wrist, you know, that it comes out. So when you come back and you reach back for your throw, you know, lock your wrist on the angle, you know, that you want it to be at for when you come snapping through. Also, you know, remember when you're coming through, the throw is down here and the palm is up when you release it. If you roll the wrist forward, you know, it, it pulls the disc nose down. And it's really a, uh, it's a technical thing that you gotta learn. Um, you know, cause if you come through too much, you know, let's say your palms up and you're coming through, you know, it releases it with the nose up. So sometimes you'll release it and the nose will be up and it kind of stalls out a little bit. You know, you'll throw it out there, but it'll have that nose up, so it'll stall out and, you know, fade to the right. I think most people, you know, err that way. You know, um, trying to get it flat, you know, trying to get that perfect spot to where the nose is down, you know, takes a lot of uh, practice because it's all the, the wrist angle. You know, so when you're first learning, you might notice that your disc is riding high on the nose. You know, because you're coming in from here. And as you're throwing it, you know, the wrist is up. So it gives an up on the nose. So that's why I say a lot of times people will throw it on a hyzer. They'll keep this outside low. And they'll just let the disc come out on a hyzer and then fly. But if you're, you know, after you get it down, I would just throw the hyzer. But as you kind of refine it and you want to try to start throwing it flat so you can get maximum distance, you know, that's just a wrist angle you're just going to have to figure out. Um, you know, because like normally you come through down here, but if you want to bring it out flat, you know, you're going to have to figure this out to where you want it to release. Like sometimes you'll release it and the nose will be down. And you'll notice a disc will just pitch down real fast. It'll come out of your hands, you know, and just nose dive down, you know, because you got the nose too much down. Um, but for learning, I just recommend throwing the hyzer. You know, just come in, throw the disc low on the outside, and just let it fly a hyzer flight for learning. Um, we'll talk about later, because you can learn how to flip the disc so instead of you trying to get it flat, you know, when you're coming through here, instead of you trying to get the, the disc completely flat on the release, 
you could throw a hyzer flip where you would release it low on this outside edge the disc will fly flatten up to flat and then fly and then land so those are things you can learn but it's the disc that does that so you have to find a disc that will that will flip up on you but not be so understable that you flip the disc you know you don't want a disc that you know you throw it here and it rolls back up the flat but then takes off left you know because then it will it flipped on you so you need to find a disc that can release low on the outside edge and a hyzer it'll ride up to flat but it still has enough stability to come back to the right or land straight but that's kind of a little more advanced stuff uh, we'll talk more about that you know looking for a disc um, you know you can't just throw a hyzer flip at any conditions you know you have to have a certain wind condition to throw a hyzer flip so uh, we'll get into some more of that but for the uh, for throwing the forehand the big thing is, is once again bending your legs keeping your head on top the uh, forehand takes you know more lean over I notice a lot more people will come in you know more of a lean than you would a backhand you know a backhand you'll be like up here you see my ba uh, back angle so a backhand you're up here and you'll throw through but I notice with the forehand people will come down lower on their back angle and I think they do it because you don't want to flip the disc if you're running in and you're staying up high on your forehand for you know we're talking a long throw you know full throw if you stay standing you have a tendency to get here and this disc you might bring up to your shoulder see how it's really close to my shoulder because I'm standing up straighter when I bring my elbow in I have a tendency to bring this disc up you can see how it's higher than my elbow and I'm standing straighter and what you do is you end up flipping the disc it comes out of your hand just like that it comes out high on this outside edge which would make the disc turn left so I think that's why more people throw from down here they'll bend over more because they want to make sure that this disc this outside edge of the disc stays down you know you want this disc when you're coming through and you can step in to throw and you kind of stay more bent over so then when I come in with my elbow my disc is lower on this outside edge you can see how now it's below my elbow and that guarantees that you're going to throw the disc on a hyzer and lend back to the right so I think body angle for a forehand you just want to be over more because when you bring in the elbow because you can see if I'm just standing here like this the nose is low the wrist is below my elbow if I'm here for this release look what happens as I stand up so if I raise my my back angle look at the disc See, I'm changing the angle of the disc just by raising my my hips and my back here so you can see now how the disc is way up outside edges up you know and then I come back over you know now it's outside again so when you're practicing like I say on the forehand it's good to stay bent over more um, the run-up for a uh, forehand throw it's still like a backhand you will X step into the throw um, so when you're coming in 
You want to hold your disc? Give a firm grip. Keep it down. Hold on to it. And a lot of times I like to lead with the right leg if you're a you know, right-handed thrower. Take a small step with the right leg. Then you come in with the left leg. And then it's like a hop into your, into your throw. So you're here, and then you'll hop up to there. So you come in with a small step. Come in with your left leg behind again, and then back to the front. On the disc, a lot of the ways that you know you hold the disc is kind of preference, whatever you like. Some people will get like an arm swing. You know, they come up and then they come back down with it. Um, you know, you can hold it up high, come in, you know, do a short little drop back up. I think when people throw a forehand, they try to get a little more of a flow. It's not the same as a backhand. A backhand would kind of be like a violent throw. When you throw a backhand, you know, you're really twerking on it and it's more of a violent throw. When you throw a forehand, I think it's a little more of a finesse, you know, it's a little more of a feel. So I think that's why, you know, like you say, you watch people and some will swing their arms up as they're coming into the throw. You know, they'll come up here and then bring it all the way back down. But it kind of feels like they just want, you know, you try to develop a little bit of rhythm. So most of that would be up to you. Um, there's no exact way to how to approach your throw. Um, so if you're back here, you hold your disc, you can kind of just take your line, take your grip, and then just up and throw. Um, so once again, just kind of same thing, just take your grip, you know, kind of be loose, take your grip, just be relaxed, and then step into it, just kind of Step in with your thing, like there. You know, then maybe, and then pop up. Uh, so most of that kind of uh, throw, you know, it'd be up to you to find your tempo. I'd practice slow first, you know, just walk into it. You know, just kind of find your rhythm. You know, if you're here, you know, up, you know, maybe down again, pop, you know, throw. Um, you know, it's just, you just got to kind of find out what works for you. When you're throwing long range, you really got to stay down with the disc. Um, like we were talking with the body angle. Um, when you're trying to push the disc, you know, for maximum distance, so when you're running in, you know, you want to stay down again. You know, you want an athletic stance. You know, you're on the balls of your feet, bent leg. And it's all, you know, balance. And also, when you're coming out of the throw, sometimes, you know, um, you know, like on a four, uh, backhand, when you throw your backhand and you come through, you know how your back leg can come around? You know, it'll land somewhere. You know, you'll throw your backhand, this leg comes through, and it might land here. Throwing a forehand is the same thing. Your back leg will come through with the throw. So when you're here, take your throw, so you come in, and you're here, the elbow comes in first, and then the wrist snaps, and your elbow stays close to your body, it's like the middle of my stomach, so the elbow's pivoting like right here, 
So as I'm pushing forward, right here is where it pivots and I snap the wrist. And right when I let go of that wrist, my back leg comes forward. So once again, take your grip, step up. So right here, I'm bent over, my knees are bent, and as I drive in, the elbow is leading the shot. So your elbow comes in, you know, close to your side, not out here, don't let it fly out. So you come in, the elbow's leading, and then right about the middle of the stomach, you know, is the elbow. And then it pops. So that's your release right here. So the wrist and the forearm, and then as soon as you release it, this leg steps through. So you finish forward on the throw. You know, once again, it's just a timing thing. You know, you'll need to get used to the timing of your release. You know, the elbow, um, you know, when you're here, you know, that elbow's coming in, you know, you know, just like the backhand, the elbow pulls down, you know, then your forearm snaps around. So you come down, forearm snaps around on a backhand. Forehand, you're here, your elbow leads, forearm, wrist, snap around. So it's there. You know, this arm's clearing out. And then you're popping from here. Um, some of that, you know, from practicing slow and building up, you know, you're still using all your stomach muscles to make the throw. Um, you know, getting a good, you know, when you come back, you know, getting a good torque on the body, you know, so you come up you reach back and as you're coming in, you know, there's a good torque here. You know, I got my shoulders turned. So I'm making tension on the stomach by rotating the shoulders. See, my shoulders rotate here and that's tightening up the midsection. So that way, when you uncoil, you know, when this arm now comes back around, it uncoils everything and then that's your power of your throw. So to break it down, you know, just practice slow. You know, get yourself a nice slow tempo first. Just start here, step in, just swing the disc back, give yourself a little hop, you know, and then release the disc. Um, when you're first starting to learn, you know, obviously your accuracy ain't there. So you just gotta, you know, work with the throw and then we'll dial in everything later. So for now, you just wanna learn your step in. So you're starting here, step in with the right leg, back leg, and then right then you can hop. And then from down here, turn and throw. So shoulder, turn and throw. And the disc stays low on that outside edge. So for now, I just practice that. So we've already, you know, just do a lot of stand up straight, practice snapping the wrist and throwing. Uh, do mid ranges, because they won't go as far and they're easier to throw. Um, you know, as you develop your snap, you'll move up in disc speed. So practice here, and then once you get you know your snap going, start walking in your X step. So you're here, come in, more on top so the disc will stay low. And as you drive through, this arm clears its way up. So 
So anyways, uh, hopefully uh, some of that will help for now. Uh, we'll get a little more detailed on some of the X steps and elbow positioning. Uh, but for now, this is Michael out on Maui. Aloha.